one of the most bizarre metrics that exists to test one's mental grit, stamina, and determination is the art of memorizing the digits of pi. <laughs> As the numbers move further from the decimal, they become seemingly random and too small for a human ever to need to know, and yet people have managed to memorize these digits by the thousands. Surely this is an impressive feat. These individuals devoted mass quantities of time to mass memorization, to reading and reciting until they could recall numbers for hours on end. But what if they didn't have to? What would be the implications of a man who could recite pi without needing to consciously recall it? I have synesthesia. It's a condition which creates a merging of the senses differently for different people in such a way that certain ideas or stimuli invoke unusual responses. Synesthetes have been documented to taste words, to see sound, or even to associate a gender or personality with letters and numbers. Grapheme color synesthesia is a form which forces me to see numbers and letters in my head in a particular color, and chromesia is a form where music and sound present me with a visual image in my head. My mind has its own font, where anything I read appears in their respective color, and when I hear music, an explosion of clouds and waves and pulses represent the melodies. These images aren't voluntary. Anytime I even think of a number or letter, it will appear in the right color. And if I listen to music, or even think of listening to music, I will always see the waves. They'll never change. For my entire life, the color N will be pink. The number two will be green. And if I play music in the key of E, it will carry a tint of yellow in the clouds. But perhaps the most surprising aspect of synesthesia is how bizarrely natural it is. Most people who have it don't even know because they lead a life so typical that they don't think to ask if they occur and experience life differently than an average person. I didn't even know that I had synesthesia until the images I see came up in a casual conversation about a year ago. Most people who have it say that it's fairly neutral, not good or bad. Their extra senses are simply present, and they can be pleasant. But people who do have synesthesia can be shamed for what they see or what they witness, especially in cases of the young. Non-traditional methods of thinking can be frowned upon in a traditional learning environment. But maybe they can use these senses for good. Maybe they can benefit from what they see. In the creative arts, this is overwhelmingly apparent. Studies have shown that people with synesthesia are more likely to take jobs with creative thinking. In the music industry, for example, there appears to be an oversaturation of synesthetes, with names like Pharrell and Billy Joel claiming that they use the colors that they see in sound to help them write. They would write their music in such a way that it would produce the colors that they wanted to see rather than the sounds they wanted to hear. In the STEM field, it's much less apparent, the benefits of synesthesia, but I've already seen it affect my career as a young mathematician. When I work, numbers and letters are constantly appearing in my head, interacting as I divide and multiply, and moving around when I do calculus and number theory in a way that makes sense to me. I can check my work based on an intuition of which colors should have stayed and which ones should go away when I perform an operation. Surely I can do math in the traditional sense, but Using the images helps me understand, and it's that understanding that makes it work. I don't think that it's a special gimmick or a shortcut that I use my synesthesia to do math, but a learning tool. I was able to learn math from two perspectives, the normal sense and the visual sense that I can see in my head. And perspective is what helps us understand problems. And because of this perspective, I was able to learn a method that for me worked better. Which brings us back to pi. When I first attempted to recite some digits of pi, I didn't realize that I was relying entirely on my synesthesia. As I read the numbers and tried to recall them, I wouldn't think of the numbers. I would just look at the mental image that came to mind when I thought of pi and read off the colors, the letters, the groupings that I saw. And I learned a few hundred letters that way until I decided to focus on memorizing a speech about it instead. <laughs> What excites me about pi isn't that certain synesthetes are well-equipped to handle it, it's that the world leaders in memorizing pi, for the most part, are not synesthetes. These people apply methods 
such as associating numbers with objects and then telling a story about the objects in a way that represents the number, or associating them with phonetics in such a way that they'll tell a story whose words sound like pi. Their method of using sounds or using objects to represent the numbers and my method of using the numbers that I already see are incredibly similar. We took a tedious and bizarre topic and reframed it in a way that for us was much better. And who knows what else we can learn from people with other types, what somebody who can taste a word or somebody who can feel sound could contribute in their ways of learning. I hope that the synesthete stands as a reminder. Different people think differently and that doesn't make them wrong. We're wired to handle the world in our own ways, and that's not a bad thing. If I told you before today that H was orange, and it had to be for me to do math, you might think that I was crazy. But most of the people in my life don't even know that I have synesthesia. They don't know that when I'm sitting in a math class, this is what I'm doing, and it's never stopped me from interacting with them, or teaching them, or learning with them. If we can cultivate the eccentric rather than shame it, if we can appreciate others' methods of solving problems, and if we could try to learn from what we don't even understand, we just might learn that the world isn't so black and white. Maybe we think in a whole range of colors, and we can use those colors to help us. Take it from the mathematician who thinks that purple is divisible by five. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs>